It looks good. It smells good. The birds are there because it's not just grass. The squirrels are playing around. Oh, look at a little bunny hopping around. There's a lot of things that conversion of a vacant lot or a front yard again or a backyard can do for community. As a result, these access points, like our senses, can be utilized to the benefit of the whole. Back January the 15th, two Kroger's at the same time closed in Southeast Raleigh. We had Kroger's on Raleigh Boulevard, I think. Yeah, Raleigh Boulevard, Kroger's on Raleigh Boulevard, and they, are re they have relocated. As a result of those closures, 70-something thousand people lost access to fresh food. This, this was our grocery store, our pharmacy, all that from the south side and it's gone. So I don't know what we're gonna do now. I don't know what we're gonna do. All these places have lots of vacant land because of poverty issues. When the house burns down, they tear it down and they don't build it back up again. There's no jobs, there's no healthy food system. The schools are barely getting by, graduation rates are low. Uh, the schools are pushing out young men of color because they don't understand them and they can't work with them. As a result, you got a lot of issues. What a vacant lot can do for a community is totally revitalize it. That vacant lot can become a community gathering spot. And once you begin to gather around something that's positive, that positivity has a vibration, the positivity spreads. We can now have a, a rallying cry for communities to look at how do we begin to take back our food system. You don't need to have a Kroger when you got F&T Farms. And we farmers, we're the young black farmers around here. Any gardens you see it around, they got food shutter stamp on it. Me and my friend, me and my partner did that. We grow food, we supply food, we sell food, and we teach people how to grow and sell and produce food. Fred and Travis were one of my first crew members, and they've been with me for just about six months, if not more. And the results are we're building success. If were it not for them, the Urban Ag program at the Interfaith Food Shelter would not be as far along as it is. My favorite food was going to McDonald's, you know, going to Bojangles, just grabbing something and it's already cooked. I ain't got to sit there and spend no time messing with it. I can just chow on it. But the younger kids don't because we got McDonald's on every corner. You can easily go get a burger for a dollar. You, would you think about something like that? You hungry? A uh, dollar, man, down, man, let's go get something to eat. You growing your own food, eating organic, eating healthy is the best way to go. So I do it so I can be fit, you know. I want to see the whole south side full of urban gardens run by me and Fred. That's basically it. The people that I've talked to have looked at the gardens once again as a resource. And they talk about the food tasting different than what they would buy. They know that because it's right there in their community, they have an access point. They talk about Nice. The greens they cooked were the best greens they've cooked in years because simply it was grown locally, they harvested it, they went home and they began to cook it. It was one of those situations where the light's been turned on, it's been transformative, there's been an influx of uh, positive energy and what the people say is they're happy it's there. They're happy with it. Oh, that's
cute right there. Right, yeah. Cute. Yeah.